Hey guys, it's Zach, and welcome to the Schmidt House Podcast. On this episode, I'm going to talk about the platforms I post my podcast on, and what I like and what I like, dislike about them, and a bit about censorship. I felt this was an important topic to talk about, so you as a listener can see from my perspective of where I list my podcast. Before we begin, I'm going to do a question and answer episode in the new year, so if you have any questions that you want me to answer, send me an email, the link is in the description box below. Let's dive in. So the topic for this episode is something that I have wanted to talk about pretty much from the start of the podcast for two reasons. The first is to give you, the listener, a level of understanding on why I choose to post the podcast on certain platforms. And the second is censorship. I'm not going to talk a lot about censorship today as I want to save that for a different episode down the road. But when I decided to do this, I wanted to put lots of effort into making good content. And part of that was making it available to the most amount of people. In order to optimize that aspect, I chose YouTube, Rumble, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. If I had started this two years ago, I strictly would have posted it on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. But it's an entirely different listing market now, and there's tons and tons of different apps and different ways for people to consume content. And there's so much content to listen to. I know myself... I've had to stop listening to some podcasts and stuff purely because there's so much to pay attention to these days. It's a very competitive space. So the four I chose, I felt, was equally as strategic in being able to capture the ability uh, to grow and have more people listen and have the ability to maximize the reach for people being able to listen to it. Now, I know there are many other places that people might use, and I could post there but I just don't think it has as much return on the effort and time that it would take. I've done a little bit of research into where people listen to, and I felt that I was able to capture the most um, with the four that I do post on. So, uh, But myself, mainly, I use YouTube about 90% of the time, I'd say, uh, to listen to podcasts or other similar content. This is the primary place that I would feel, and it, you know, and I feel that it's best to be on uh, to do my production and I base YouTube uh, on the way that I produce the podcast uh, in mind uh, the most. I consider it the most important place to be, even without having to uh, having video aspects to it right now. But YouTube, in my mind, is uh, first in and best dress. And it's as far as usability uh, and popularity, it, it takes the cake on that one. YouTube does annoy me uh, for their phone app that you can't play it in the background. <laughs> It's so annoying, but whatever. Um, YouTube pretty much has a monopoly on the content side of it. It has the most users, the most traction, and every everybody YouTube stuff, right? So I felt it was very important to be able to have my podcast on there. And I fully know that there's lots of problems specifically around censorship and freedom of speech. Um and some of the stuff that I wanted to talk about, I know could get banned. And I know my podcast is small and I don't have many subscribers, but I know that there's things that YouTube would ban me for anyways. Their guidelines are quite strict on some things, and that is concerning to me, mainly because they don't want to have people questioning their authority or whoever's paying their bills at that moment. I'm taking the stance that for the most part, it's better to be able to dodge some some landmines in order to have the important conversations and some of the topics that I want to talk about down the road. Um, you know, the other option is step on each landmine and get silenced, and then no one is able to hear this. And to be quite honest, I think there there will for sure be topics that I plan to talk about in the future that I will have to watch what I say and kind of navigate the that minefield um, when I put them together just to make sure that you guys ha can listen to this content because if there's if I you know get banned or whatever then you guys can't listen to it so it's kind of like defeating that purpose so to a certain extent you kind of have to play their game on that part but if I happen to get banned or an episode gets pulled in the future I would also like to post things on a pro free speech platform especially as a backup and that brings me to rumble so this, I felt, would get me access to more people outside of YouTube, and it would also be a backup if, in case something happened and there was to be a ban of some sort, or something along those lines. At this point in time, I find that Rumble is not nearly as user-friendly as YouTube, nor does it have even a fraction of the user traffic. 
But it does, however, have a hard stance on censorship and is focused on embracing free speech. Rumble is a Canadian company, but they're currently having lots of structural changes on the corporate side. They're moving out of Canada, mostly, well, from my perspective, mostly to avoid Justin Trudeau's upcoming bill to have the federal government censor the internet. Long and the short on this is, it'll be some sort of sequel to Bill C-10 that was introduced earlier this year. But it hit the trash ban when uh, Trudeau dissolved Parliament uh, to have his vanity election. But expect to see something more aggressive in, in a bill uh, in front of Parliament soon. But apart from leaving, leaving Canada, uh, they recently acquired Locals, which is a community-based content service that is used similar in a way that Patreon and some other services are for content creators. But Locals was started by Dave Rubin as a response to Patreon, removing him and Jordan Peterson from their platform. So essentially, when they had content behind a paywall, uh, they Patreon essentially just removed the monetization side and, and basically forced them out of their platform. So as far as uh, Rumble acquiring locals, it could be good or it could be bad. It doesn't really seem to solve the overall problem that Dave, um, you know, this problem that Dave was trying to solve when he started locals. So, but uh, even recently, Rumble has uh, also started the process of going public. Their current CEO, Chris Pevzlowski, says that it's a good thing uh, outside of the capital investment to be able to grow, uh, grow the platform. Uh, From his point of view, if the shareholders are investing in Rumble for its values, they are incentivized to keeping that service free of censorship. I don't necessarily agree to that premise. Uh, You know, there's multiple ways that it could go bad, such as a larger company taking it over outright. Then you're kind of back at square one and fighting for the same, same censorship that you tried to escape. Or it could even just be hijacked by leftists and corrupted that way, like many of other companies before it. So I don't necessarily think that that holds true, uh, you know, but in his best intentions, that's kind of the goal of what they're trying to do. And, and a capital investment could really help get um, get its reach going. So it might not be all bad, but we'll see how that plays out. But even President Trump's social media uh, company that he's trying to start up, uh, Truth Social, is partnering with Rumble, uh, mostly for their back-end video service and cloud databases within their model. Um, So all in all, I think it's a good place to post for the time being, uh, more specifically as uh, backup for those pro-free speech people that uh, dislike YouTube as well. Um, You know... Even I know I understand that there's other video services like BitChute and and things like that, um, but I just feel that the two that I'm posting on as far as video services with YouTube and Rumble, I think that's going to solve that um, that aspect of what I'm trying to do here. So the other two are good, more specifically for audio, uh, that being with Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Spotify has really exploded since the Joe Rogan experience became a Spotify exclusive. And Apple Podcasts is just a classic. That's where I started listening to podcasts. Um, everything was on there. Um, and I'm not so much afraid of uh, the censorship from either of these two places for the most part. And even if there was, uh, it doesn't bother me as much as what's going on with YouTube. Um but I really just wanted to go over this so that you had some level of understanding of things um, kind of from my point of view uh, on why I'm considering uh, the platforms when I'm posting my podcast. I want to ensure that people have access to it wherever they listen most. And, you know, personally, I find it annoying that I have to use four different apps to listen to things just because people post exclusive content on a specific site and whatnot. Um But I want to make sure that my stuff is posted where people who want to listen to me can easily find me. And that kind of led me to posting on those four main places. Now, one other platform that I am looking uh, forward to integrating once it all is put together is what Tim Pool is coming up with. And it's essentially what Locals should have been. It would combine many of the positives of the platforms that I've talked about and described, except for... um, it would be able to run on any website and it'd be fully integrated um, that way. So you would be able to post your own videos and content on your own website um, and have, uh, you know, all of your own revenue streams and stuff like that. Um, 
a hundred percent for you and um it would all be for free so i'm really interested to see how that all plays out because i think that would be a, a complete game changer and what tim pool is um kind of described i think would be really really good all things considered um especially even just to have you know not just another platform but kind of the, a platform that solves the problem that everybody's seeing so um but he's talked about it a bunch on his podcast and once it's available, I'll definitely run things on that as well. One last note on uh, pertaining to platforms is that uh, I really don't want to ad- run any type of ads on the podcast. I know many do. Uh, that's how they make money. I personally find ads so annoying. Um, but I understand that, you know, to be able to have a career from this and to monetize it, um, or, you know, for those creators ads are kind of just the way the way that it is um but i despise ads i use brave browser just to uh, avoid ads on youtube um i know when i watch youtube on my tv or my phone i just find it annoying and i'm like why the heck are there so many ads well it's on my computer uh i'll usually have you know it on in the background while i'm working have a podcast up then zero interruptions whenever you use brave browser so i would highly recommend um, people using Brave um, just for the ad blocking and that type of stuff and um, the, the data tracking and stuff. Um, use Brave, use a VPN, DuckDuckGo, especially if you're interested in uh, being able to see what Google hides from you. There's lots of information. Um, lots of information that Google censors or curates for you. And DuckDuckGo and, and Brave are definitely good ways to go about doing that. Um, plus with Brave, there's it has um, cryptocurrency integrations and stuff like that. So it, it's a really good browser to use. I've, I've switched over to using that significantly more than others. But um, yeah. Anyways, if you like what I'm doing and want to support me to keep this ad free, uh, you can support me via Bitcoin. My wallet address is in the description box below. Um, but sharing the show also helps, uh, you know, I hope that you are enjoying listening to me as much as I enjoy putting these podcasts together. But let me know in the comments if there's a platform that you use uh, that I should post on, and I'll look into getting it posted there as well. Why I feel this is so important and uh, the reason that I wanted to have this as a subject matter is because I wanted you guys to be able to understand um, this more so from a censorship perspective. Um... Big tech and the government are really cracking down on opinions that they don't like. On a personal note, within the past three months on Twitter, I've had two 12-hour suspensions, one three-day, one seven-day, and just today I got another 12-hour ban on top of that. Most of these were for talking about COVID and the government. Um, I don't really... Twitter's Like Dave Chappelle said, Twitter isn't a real place, so lots of the time I don't really care what I put on there. Um, but to be completely honest, um, it's getting frustrating because they're definitely silencing so much of the conversations that need to be had. Um, and I feel that the only way to kind of escape that other than to switching, uh, platforms, you know, there's parlor, there's gab, there's this, there's that. It seems that there's a different, um, social media site that's trying to combat this. But it just doesn't have the reach like these big tech companies are able to essentially have a monopoly on the market. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. It's just they're using it for nefarious um, intentions. And that's the problem that I have. Um, But I do have lots of um, good interactions with people. And I find a lot of good information from Twitter. That's why um, these bands are, you know, I'm getting annoyed of it, to say the least. Um, But I just don't think that there's another good one to jump to um, for me to be able to have um, the interactions that I do. So, But if you do know of one that you use, um, please let me know. Post it in the comments or send me an email because I would, if there's one that is really good and there's lots of people and and, um, similar-minded people, I would definitely um, look into it as well. I just haven't found one that is really the the right scope so more just a little bit more on twitter uh one of the things that um 
got me banned was simply for saying that the COVID vaccines kill people, which is evidently true based on the VAERS data and verified all by the CDC. Um, but that means nothing to big tech. So you can be telling the truth and use the sources that they allow on their platform and you can still get banned. But um, even saying what I just said right now could get this episode pulled from YouTube. So we'll see if that happens. But um, Twitter has also been shadow banning lots of my, uh, not lots of mine, but some of my tweets. The other night I was tweeting at the leader of the opposition, Aaron O'Toole, calling out his hypocrisy. And um, not one of them was actually posted to my Twitter. They were all suppressed. I had to go actually search for them because I couldn't find them on my profile. They're still on Twitter, but nobody can see them. I've had zero interactions um, with those specific posts. Um, so that is definitely concerning. And again, like this is just one site when you take a look at, and I'm again, I'm not a very big person on any social media or any platform by any means, but it just, it, it's crazy that it's still happening. I think I have 500 and some odd followers, but it's like even a person as small as I am, you know, you scale that up. There's people that have millions of followers. Is they say the one, th the wrong thing, and their whole account could get nuked. I've noticed this happening more frequently, not just to me, but lots of other people. Um, people have been saying that they've been losing followers. They'll wake up one morning, they'll just have you know, a couple hundred followers just disappear. You know, you have other people getting their accounts nuked. Most recent one um, was the Ghislaine Maxwell trial tracker. They had, in a very short amount of time, they had got over half a million followers, and the person who runs that account um, was just pumping out info from the trial, and they just got blocked. It's very frustrating, because even something of that magnitude really need the information on, on the whole Epstein, Maxwell thing, the information really does need to get out, and they're doing everything in their ability to be able to make sure that it doesn't. So that one was a big one. And it's so blatantly obvious that it just came from, from big tech. Another one that got um, blocked was um, the, the account that tracks Nancy Pelosi's insider trading. Uh, lots of people have been able to make money off of following whatever Nancy Pelosi is investing her money in because she's a corrupt cr uh, criminal in the United States government. But um, it's just, it's it's getting crazy and it's, these types of conversations that we need to have to be able to navigate it. But the, the big question here is how are we supposed to be able to get important information out to the public if our speech on the internet is censored? I mean, even if you look at the simple subject of COVID in the last two years, how much garbage information, how much propaganda, how many lies are out there that are circulated and um, put out there and embraced by these big tech companies. Even look at the Hunter Biden laptop situation in the election in the 2020 election. Like this stuff isn't made up. It's a hundred percent accurate. It's just the big tech is able to censor it and then spread lies and manipulate the masses and say that it's not real. So we need to have bigger conversations about this because if we don't stay on top of this, we are going to lose our ability to to talk to one another, you know, even there, you know, they they push lockdowns throughout COVID. Um, it's getting harder and harder. And then you have the Canadian government that's going to start going through your, your cell phone, um, you know, your text messages and stuff like that. It's insane. But one last note on this subject. Um, I wasn't going to actually talk about this, but it was, it was too much not to, I was going through Instagram the other day and I saw some of the most racist things that I've ever seen in a long time posted on there. Uh, it was posted by someone I follow, so it wasn't even like I was searching something random or something trending on Instagram. It was just popped up from someone that I follow. I usually go on Instagram mostly to just see um, hunting videos and, and and stuff like that, gun videos. But um, someone that I'd follow, someone that I grew up with, um, posted something very, very racist. And um, so I just wanted to kind of talk about this kind of as the flip flop to kind of kind of drive my point just a little bit more. Um, this person is clearly a social justice warrior and a woke progressive type. They're also an educator, though. So this person's a teacher 
and has the ability to influence and indoctrinate, indoctrinate the youth. So this is also why I felt that it was what what they were posting was was so bad. Anyways, but this was so overly racist and somehow not only was it allowed on Instagram, but it was also a popularized opinion by this person as this is something that they talk about lots, but um, I mostly check this person's post just to see what crazy stuff the left is pushing just so I can kind of get in, in their mindset and understand things from their perspective. Um, but this post absolutely disgusted me. I remember seeing it, reading it through multiple times because I could not believe that it was actually posted there. And I wanted to write in the comments um, some type of objection to it, but I ultimately chose not to. They post similar things to this frequently, but this one was just over the top. Um, this post was targeted towards white people, and the poster who made it was white. Um, my comment that I was going to post was, one, can you be racist towards white people? You know, I know the left thinks that you can't, but I wanted to see what they were going to come up with. Number two, if you were to substitute the word black instead of the word white, would you feel comfortable posting the exact same thing? I don't think so, but my God, it was pretty bad. I'm not going to say what the post was just because I, I, I don't want to. Now, this person, uh, and like I know this person, I knew their family, uh, so that's why I'm really not giving more, any more information about it. Um, but I know how this person was raised. I know their parents and I know their parents would never have let this, something like this slide, you know, their teachers taught them better than that. And how do I know it's because I had the exact same teachers. I, my, our, our parents were friends, you know, but sadly, I think that, uh, most people are okay with this type of behavior and they reinforce it. It's, I mean, Instagram obviously allows something like that on their, um, on their platform. But I bring this up to show the level of depravity and hypocrisy of the left and the tech companies that are clearly embracing critical race theory that the left are using to win these ideological battles. And it's posts like this that prove to me that the real racists are the woke progressive types. Censorship is a cornerstone of their ability to spew this filth. But there's more stuff like this uh, that I plan to talk about in a future episode. I didn't. I honestly did not want to talk about this last little bit, but it's been something that's actually been bugging me for a couple of days, and I just had. I had. I don't want to share it with people that I know, because they know that person too, and without being able to put it in the right light. I don't want to throw this person under the bus because I, I I do respect them as a person. Um, I just can't get behind that overt racism that they're spewing. So yeah, uh, censorship is definitely something I'm going to talk about in the future. I hope you understand my position on this whole thing and why I choose to post my podcast on certain platforms. So if there is a platform that is pro-free speech, I'll be leaning towards posting it there while recognizing the reach and usability of a platform such as YouTube. So I'm going to call it for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. I honestly, I really appreciate it. Um, please help me beat the algorithms and, and fight big tech and grow the show by sharing this with just one friend. Just copy and paste the, uh, the link tree link in the description box below and text it to a friend and have them have a listen because uh, that would be absolutely huge for me. And that's the best way to help me grow the show. Trudeau should be in jail. Go buy guns and ammo and stay free. Thank you for listening to the Schmidt House podcast. If you want to support the podcast, I'm accepting payments via Bitcoin. Just send me an email and I'll respond with the details. The Schmidt House podcast is available on the following services, YouTube, Rumble, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and hosted by Buzzsprout. Please like, subscribe, enable notifications, and most importantly, share this with a friend. Check out the description box for more information about things I discussed this episode and how to get in contact with me. Please reach out to me with any suggestions or topics that you would like to hear. 